The movie begins in a city, which is located in Chicago. Due to past wars aimed at self-protection and the implementation of lockdown regulations, Chicago has become a separate nation. A large fortress has been constructed to encircle Chicago's borders from the outside world. To maintain peace, the city's founders created five different factions based on human virtues. The first faction, Candor, consists of honest individuals who are trusted to uphold justice. The second, Amity, is made up of peace-loving people responsible for agriculture. The third, Erudite, includes intelligent individuals who conduct research and experiments. The fourth, Dauntless, comprises brave souls tasked with security. Lastly, Abnegation is a group of highly altruistic people, thus entrusted with governance. Besides these, there are also unofficial groups known as the Factionless and the Divergent. The Factionless are outcasts or vagrants, considered the rejects of society in the film. In contrast, the Divergent are individuals who possess two or more of the virtues mentioned earlier. The film is narrated by a young woman named Beatrice Triss Pryor. She is an adolescent on the brink of adulthood from an abnegation family but has always admired the Dauntless. Beatrice has a father, a mother, and a brother named Caleb. Her father is a member of the government council. Both Beatrice and Caleb must undergo a test, like everyone else, to determine their true selves and where they belong. Will it be erudite, amity, candor, abnegation, or dauntless? On the day of the choosing ceremony, all the youths who have taken the test have the right to choose any faction based on their test results. However, once a choice is made, it cannot be changed. On the day of the test to determine their suitable faction, the test aims to reveal their fundamental nature and personality through a subconscious simulation. During the test, Beatrice is assisted by a woman named Tori, who helps her choose a faction based on her personality. Beatrice is given a serum that renders her unconscious, and we enter her dream, which represents her greatest fear. She finds herself in a place full of mirrors, faced with a choice between meat or a knife, made by her own reflection. Confused, Beatrice chooses neither. Suddenly a dog appears and Beatrice turns back to her previous choices, but the object is missing, and she is attacked. Resigned to her fate, suddenly the dog turned tame, and a child appears calling the dog, but the dog reverts to its wild state and chases the child. Due to her high sense of humanity, she saves the child. Suddenly, Beatrice wakes up, and her test proctor, Tori, is shocked to find something unusual in Beatrice's test results. Beatrice possesses three qualities, abnegation, erudite, and dauntless, which means she is divergent. Tori advises Beatrice to keep her divergence a secret and suggests she join her parents' faction abnegation for safety. To protect Beatrice, Tori manually enters abnegation as her test result. On the day of the choosing ceremony, there are five bowls representing the five factions, and participants must cut their hand to drop blood into the bowl of the faction they choose. Beatrice is conflicted, having hoped her test results would guide her choice. When Caleb is called, he chooses erudite, shocking everyone since erudite is known to dislike abnegation. When it's Beatrice's turn, although initially leaning towards abnegation, she chooses Dauntless, surprising her community. As a new member of Dauntless, Beatrice must jump from a moving train as her first adrenaline-fueled challenge. She climbs a pole and leaps into another train, where she meets her new friend Christina from Candor. Upon arrival at Dauntless headquarters, they jump from the train onto a building and are greeted by the Dauntless leader Eric, who instructs them to enter by jumping into a hole. When Eric asks who will jump first, everyone hesitates until Beatrice volunteers. Despite her fear, she jumps and is caught by a safety net below, where she is welcomed by a member named Four. Overwhelmed, Beatrice doesn't respond when Four asks her name, leading her to adopt the name Triss. Four is the son of Marcus, the leader of Abnegation. Triss quickly befriends Christina, Al, and Edward. Meanwhile, a new member named Peter constantly mocks Triss, calling her stiff. The new initiates are taken to explore the pit, the dauntless common area, and then to their shared sleeping quarters, with no separation between males and females. Triss attempts to converse with Four, but he ignores her. Al reveals that Four has twice been offered a leadership position, but has declined. 
Triss undergoes rigorous training to be accepted into Dauntless, including physical and mental challenges, under the sadistic and cruel leadership of Eric. Any new initiate scoring below a certain threshold is expelled from Dauntless and becomes factionless. Triss fights hard to pass the tests, which include self-defense, shooting, running, and knife throwing, marking the beginning of her transformation into a strong individual. Triss, originally from the Abnegation faction, is perceived as weak because she is not a fighter. In her first fight, Triss, being the first jumper, is pitted against the last jumper and loses, placing her at position 32 in the red zone. Afterwards, she goes with Christina to get tattoos. At the tattoo parlor, she encounters Tori and inquires about her test, but Tori is reluctant to discuss it. The next day, they visit the Great Wall for the first time, viewing the outside world, which is just the agricultural lands of the Amity faction, and the rest remains unknown. During knife-throwing practice, Triss improves while another friend struggles, failing to stick the knife. Eric, in frustration, orders the friend to retrieve the knife, but he refuses out of fear. Eric then commands him to stand in front of the target, causing him to tremble with fear. Triss, feeling compassion, volunteers to take their place as the target. Her abnegation and dauntless traits are evident here. Eric instructs Four to throw knives at Triss, and one grazes her ear. Four does this intentionally, knowing that if Triss remains unharmed, Eric will continue to demand more throws. Triss earns her friend's admiration for her bravery. However, the mood shifts when Peter reads aloud a newspaper gossip about Triss and Caleb switching factions, despite their father being an abnegation council member. Later, Triss and her friends notice a commotion and become suspicious when they see Janine, the erudite leader, at the Dauntless headquarters, seemingly plotting with the Dauntless leader. The scene change. Triss's score improves to 22, but she remains in the red zone. In her second fight against Peter, Triss initially has the upper hand, but ends up being knocked out and loses. When she regains consciousness, Christina and Al visit her, informing her that she has the lowest score and has been expelled. Al suggests that Triss should return to abnegation, given her father's high position there, which might allow her to be accepted back. Triss remains silent and questions why they are wearing harnesses. It turns out there's a final physical test. Christina and Al leave and Triss, determined to participate, follows them onto the train. Eric confronts her, asking who told her to come, but Triss insists it was her own decision. The game begins with two teams, led by Eric and Four, competing to capture the opponent's flag using stun weapons. Four's team devises a strategy, but Triss takes the initiative to climb a windmill to scout the enemy's area, followed by Four, who reveals his fear of heights. From the top, Triss and Four locate the flag and devise a new strategy. One team attacks while the other captures the flag. In a shootout, Triss successfully retrieves the flag and raises it in victory. To celebrate, they ride the zipline, which is thrilling. But Triss forgets to break. Her score jumps to 20, moving her out of last place and advancing her to the next stage, mental training. The next day, while helping with logistics, Triss's mother covertly approaches her during packing. Her mother reveals that she knows Triss is divergent and warns her to be careful not to let others find out. Triss begins her second stage of training, and during the test, she is injected with a serum that induces hallucinations. She finds herself trapped in living mud and attacked by crows, but she realizes it's just a hallucination. She wakes up to find that the hallucination lasted only three minutes. Four tests her again, and the time is the same. Four is puzzled and asks about her personality test results, but Triss lies, saying she is abnegation. Four is confused as dauntless thinking is different. After training, Triss seeks out Tori for an explanation. Tori reveals that her brother was divergent and was killed because of it, raising the question, what is wrong with being divergent? The next day, Triss meets Caleb, who warns her that Erudite plans to attack Abnegation, believing they are more deserving of governing. Under the pretext that Abnegation is harboring divergence, Triss returns to the Dauntless headquarters where she is ambushed by three people, including Al. Fortunately, Four rescues her, and she spends the night in his room. The following day, Al apologizes to Triss during a meal, but she dismisses him. Later, Al is found dead, having apparently committed suicide. Triss is shocked by the news. Four apologizes for Al's actions, and Triss opens up to Four about being divergent. 
4. Knowing Triss is divergent teaches her how to think like a Dauntless, especially for the final test that will be observed by many. A Dauntless would solve problems with tools, not just with the mind as Triss has been doing. When Triss enters Four's dream, she learns his real name is Tobias, and he is often beaten by his father, Marcus, an abnegation leader. Afterward, they return to Four's room, discuss tattoos, and share a kiss. The next morning, they notice erudite leaders at Dauntless headquarters, presumably planning to create an army with the injection serum. Triss also hears rumors of an erudite coup against abnegation. Four shares his suspicions about shipments and the injection serum that can influence people's will. During the test panel, Triss is injected with the serum and her hallucination is observed by others. She successfully completes the test with the dauntless approach to problem solving as taught by Four. They officially become dauntless. However, all Dauntless members are then gathered and injected with a tracking serum. Triss tries to avoid it but is caught by Eric and injected as well. That night she notices something strange. Her friends wake up and don military gear in a trance. She realizes it's due to the earlier injection. Pretending to be under the same influence, she joins the ranks. Unexpectedly, someone else is conscious and questions the situation, revealing himself to be divergent. Eric realizes this and shoots him. The suggested plan of the hypnotized members is to attack the abnegation faction. Triss tries to find Four, fearing he might also be hypnotized. Fortunately, Four is unaffected. Triss realizes why divergents are seen as a threat and must be eliminated. They're immune to the new mind-controlling drug. They attempt to save Triss's parents, but their house is empty and they encounter Eric, who mocks Four. Four restrains his emotions but Eric grows suspicious because a hypnotized person would continue moving, not stand still. Eric points his gun at Four's head, but Triss points her gun at Eric, leading to a standoff. Eric doubts Triss's ability to shoot him, but she surprises him by doing so, leading to a fight. However, they are outnumbered and captured. Four is taken away in a vehicle with Jeanine, while Triss is taken to an alley for execution. Just as Triss is about to be shot, her mother, a former Dauntless, saves her. A shootout ensues, and Triss is forced to shoot her friend who is attacking her. Despite being outnumbered, Triss's mother sacrifices herself to save Triss. Triss finds her father, Caleb, and Marcus, and explains the mind-controlling serum. They decide to destroy the control center in the Dauntless compound. They jump into a hole, reminiscent of the beginning of their journey. Triss confronts Peter, demanding to know the location of the control room. Peter mocks her, and Triss, in a fit of rage, shoots him. The control room is heavily guarded, and Triss's father sacrifices himself to create a diversion. Inside the control room, Triss finds Four restrained. After freeing him, Four attacks Triss, but she manages to awaken him from his trance. Janine activates the troops to mercilessly kill all abnegation citizens. Triss stops her by threatening her with a knife, but Janine is resolute, even willing to die. Triss injects Janine with her own serum, commanding her to cancel the execution program and erase it. Janine complies, and the hypnotized soldiers regain consciousness, sparing the gathered citizens. Janine also awakens and laments her failure. Janine's loyalists attempt to enter the building, but Triss, Four, Marcus, and Caleb, who have survived, escape by train beyond the wall. They become part of the factionless, and the film ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video.